Hello and welcome to Recyclist. It's August 16th, 2024. I'm your host, Eric Provost, and this is your weekly roundup of all the biggest news stories in the world of waste, gas, and energy presented by Diamond Scientific. First things first, and as always, let's take a quick look at the stock market and five stocks on the move this week within the world of waste, gas, and energy. Across the pond, Invitec Biogas is currently trading at a value of 29.9 euros each. Back over here, though, Borolex is currently trading at a value of $25.65 per share. Total Energies is currently trading at a value of $68.65 each. Renewable Energy Group is currently sitting at $61.50 per share. And Waste Connections is currently up to $181.88 per share. But first up in the news, according to data released by the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency this past week, more than 2.24 billion Renewable Identification Numbers, or RINs, were generated under the Renewable Fuel Standard in July 2024. This up from 1.99 billion generated during the same month in 2023. Total RIN generation for the first seven months of 2024 reached 14.42 billion. This up from 13.42 billion generated during the same period as last year. And up next, Algonquin Power and Utilities Corps has agreed to sell the majority of its renewable energy business, including its renewable natural gas projects, to developer and independent power producer LS Power for up to $2.5 billion. LS Power will pay $2.28 billion in cash at closing, plus up to $220 million in an earn-out agreement tied to certain wind assets, according to the announcement. Algonquin Power will use the funds to pay down debt while it focuses on growing the regulated utility side of the business, according to CEO Chris Huskelson during a second quarter earnings call this past week. The only renewable energy assets Algonquin will retain will be its hydropower projects. Next, BP, the parent company of renewable natural gas developer Archaea Energy, announced this past week it had fully acquired Sunshine Gas Producers in its second quarter earnings report. The entity was previously a joint venture between Archaea and a subsidiary of DTE Energy, a Michigan-based energy company and utility. A subsidiary of Republic Services wound up suing Sunshine Gas Producers last year over alleged missed payments related to excess gas rights produced at the Sunshine Canyon landfill in Los Angeles County, California. The lawsuit was dismissed this past April 15th per state court records. Both Republic and Archaea have declined to comment on the specific arrangement they now have after DTE's exit. And up next, according to a brand new report from Wood McKenzie entitled Trashing Your Way to a Cleaner Future, Landfill Gas as a Feedstock for RNG in North America, reveals that landfill gas to renewable natural gas capacity has nearly doubled in the past five years, with only 10% of the resource potential currently being used. The top seven developers now control over 60% of the market, indicating a trend toward consolidation. Wood McKenzie forecasts substantial growth in the sector, believing that resource potential could exceed 5 billion cubic feet per day by 2050, up from less than 4 billion cubic feet per day today. And production could exceed 2.2 billion cubic feet per day by 2050, a significant increase from the current 300 million cubic feet per day. And just a reminder, Recyclist is a registered trademark of Diamond Scientific, an industry leader in gas analysis, instrumentation, and solutions. Make sure to visit them online at diamondsci.com. That's diamondsci.com. Or you can even set up a personalized presentation by calling 321-223-7500. Now on with the news. Up next, the Port of Montreal's Grand Quai is beating its carbon footprint goals with renewable natural gas distributed by Energir, a key player in Quebec's energy transition. 
The Grand Quay, operated by the Montreal Port Authority, is now supplied by 100% renewable energy after the Port Authority's switch from fossil natural gas, previously used for heating and cooking systems in the Grand Quay's event rentals, to renewable natural gas earlier this year. Senior Director for Real Estate and Environment for the Port Authority, Benoit Vines, said, quote, the Port Authority is fully engaged in decarbonizing its operations to achieve carbon neutrality by 2035 and meet the ambitious objectives of the Montreal Climate Partnership. RNG is one of the most attractive solutions to achieve this quickly. Our Grand Quai is a showcase of our pledge to adopt best practices in sustainable development, and thanks to RNG, we're entering a new stage in substantially decreasing the carbon footprint of our buildings. End quote. Next, Waste Management is moving forward with its plan to build a new renewable natural gas facility in Lee County, Alabama, following a unanimous vote on tax reduction. The facility will be the first of its kind for the state and will begin construction in November of this year. The vote for the tax reduction was held earlier this week and passed with a 4-0 vote. With this passed, it opened the doors for waste management to build the roughly $57 million RNG facility, which will be located near the Salem Waste Disposal Center. Waste management said in a statement, quote, By capturing and converting methane emissions from our landfill operations into RNG, we aim to help mitigate greenhouse gas and criteria air pollutant emissions in Alabama and advance the state's energy goals to transition toward a cleaner, more renewable energy portfolio, end quote. And next, Amerisco Incorporated announced this past week it has been selected by the Wasatch Integrated Waste Management District to design, build, own, and operate a landfill gas to renewable natural gas plant at the Davis Landfill in Layton, Utah. This project would be Amerisco's second landfill gas project with the district and represents both organizations' continued commitment to sustainable waste management solutions that have been going for 20 years. Michael Bacchus, the executive vice president of Amerisco, said, quote, Leveraging waste byproducts to displace the use of fossil fuel is a critical part of our nation's clean and renewable energy transition. Reducing the introduction of new emission sources from a combustion of fossil fuel makes comprehensive landfill decarbonization solutions more urgent than ever. By transforming landfill gas into RNG, we're taking a significant step toward creating a cleaner planet. End quote. And lastly... California's Air Resources Board, or CARB, took another step forward in its major rulemaking activities for the state's low-carbon fuel standard this past week, issuing, quote, 15-day changes to its proposed program amendments. In addition to prior actions by CARB, Monday's proposed changes impact the biogas industry and its role in delivering fuel and reducing greenhouse gas emissions within California. Patrick Surfass, the executive director of the American Biogas Council, issued a statement in response which reads in part, quote, CARB's proposed changes would support current and near-term biogas project development by increasing the carbon intensity reduction target to 9%. This positive change will do exactly what the low-carbon fuel standard is designed to do, more dramatically decrease carbon emissions in California. It will also increase demand for renewable transportation fuels from biogas. End quote. The statement can be read in its entirety online. And that has been your August 16th, 2024 news roundup brought to you by Recyclist, a trademark of Diamond Scientific. I've been your host, Eric Provost, and we will see you back here next week for another brand new episode of Recyclist. Thank you.